so fun to see that we have now a new generation and that we help develop them to create a level that they can win also world championships. And that's amazing. It feels the same like winning myself. Joining me in the studio today is Sven Nies. Sven, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's always nice to talk about cycling and for sure about cyclocross because that's what I done the last uh, 20, 30 years. You have, you have quite, quite a long time. Now you're in Wisconsin right now. What, uh, what brings you to Wisconsin? Well, of course, the first uh, World Cups. It's always nice to come back in the factory where, where all started um, uh, for myself in 2013. Uh, at track bikes and um, if you see the development we've done the last few years and the team we created um, that are going to race now in Waterloo for the next uh, for the next season and the first uh, round of the World Cup so I'm, I'm pretty excited that's great that's great uh, Sven if you don't mind I'd like to rewind a little bit and start uh, just learning a little bit more about yourself and where you came from and grew up so let's start with where were you born I'm born in Belgium, in Baal, where I still live. Um, and yeah, I was a guy who uh, always loved riding my bike. And that's something my parents saw directly. Uh, going to school was another uh, story. I didn't love to go to school. And the only thing I wanted to do when I was a kid was riding my bike. Um, and the first 10 years, um, I came directly in competition in BMX was really a famous sport in, uh, in Belgium at that time. It was not an Olympic sport at that time, but uh, I learned all my skills uh, in BMX uh, when I was a young kid. Right. Sven, growing up, um, what did your parents do professionally when you were growing up? He, uh, my, my father was an uh, electrician. Um, he had a company himself, and I think it was his goal and his dream that I... Uh, could take over the company on a certain moment, but um, yeah, nothing uh, of this is um, is happened because yeah, I created my own passion and that was cycling. And uh, on a certain moment, I became a professional when I became twenty, twenty one, twenty two. So um, and then my parents, uh, my mother was always at home um, helping the kids. Uh, she was looking for my dad that the food was on the on the table uh, when he came back uh, home from work but um, they supported me always uh, we traveled all over the country europe um we had to do competition during the weekend and of course uh, during the week i went to school and tried to uh, to have good good results over there also yeah so you discovered the bmx bike um early early on yeah how did tell, tell me how did that happen did you see some other kids riding? Were you following yeah. something? How did that happen? Where I lived, uh, a lot of uh, friends of mine uh, were riding BMX bikes. They were a little bit older than me, but uh, it happened all on the street. Like uh, you see sometimes also young kids playing football. In our street, we, uh, we ride BMX bikes. And on a certain moment, one of the parents from my friends, they asked if I would join uh, one of the races. And uh, the week after, my parents were involved, uh, and we never stopped again for the next uh, thir thirty years. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's a great story. And in the beginning, uh, I made a lot of mistakes, of course. Um, but on a certain moment, I felt that I was explosive, that I uh, was a guy who had a good handling of my bike. And and on a certain moment, I won I won races, national championships, and then yeah. You're getting more ambitious um, and, and, and win also international races. Um, so that's, that's how it started. And in that time, were there any heroes in the BMX world? I'm thinking about someone like Dave Mira or who, who were the guys that you were looking up to in the sport of BMX? Yeah, for sure. Um, that are uh, the guys where I'm looking at, but was far away from me. Dave Mira was somebody come out of the US. He was more uh, riding freestyle bikes, jumping um, um, and, and all those tricks he's done. And, and we saw that and we, we tried to, uh, to copy all those things on the street. But um, um, heroes, yeah, racing BMX and heroes, no, I, I was always 
busy myself and try to develop myself against uh, my age group and and step by step uh, i saw that 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 worked out uh, better and better and for me the beginning was also uh, going through all those uh, levels that was okay but on a certain moment i came in the finals of a bmx race and then the pressure was too high for me and i was too nervous so i need to learn and adapt also uh, riding under pressure and that was something uh was not a talent of mine it was something that i needed to create uh during those circumstances right right all right before we get to your transition from bmx to cyclocross i want to jump to the this the sprint round of our show where i ask you a bunch of questions it's this or that just to understand what you like and what you don't like um and we can of course you know add things in but um let's start with gloves or gloveless always gloves um it's important to have a lot of grip during my rides for sure when i'm riding off-road on the road okay it's possible to ride without gloves but um i love to ride even now after my competition career um i'm riding most of the time with gloves cool coffee or tea Always coffee. Uh, when I was a kid, I didn't like coffee, but um, cycling helped me to uh, to learn how I need to drink coffee. Always black, no sugar, no milk. Beer or wine? Uh, wine. Never beer. Um, only in the secret bar when I'm riding the Legends race at, at Trek. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I never drank alcohol uh, during my career. I learned to drink a little bit more wine after my career. And now it's only red, no white wine. And my dad always said, um, wait until you are 40 and then you are going to enjoy uh, drinking a, a glass of wine. And it's true. <laughs> That's great. All right. How about uh, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Uh, waffles is a little bit too much sugar, a little bit too heavy. But pancakes sometimes, even before a race, uh, my last meal before a race, sometimes there, there were also pancakes. So, uh, yeah, you can give me every day pancakes. All right. Uh, cold weather or hot weather? Cold weather. I'm a guy who um, perform at my best when it's really cold. I have a lot of problems when it's extremely warm. Um, and and the, the biggest difficulties I had during my career was at the Olympics in Beijing on the mountain bike. Extremely warm, very heat. So for me, that was a disaster. Yeah, yeah. Well, then uh, I, sh I should be able to guess this next one. Rain or snow? Snow. Um, for me, snow, because I could use my skills out of BMX the best. Um holding your bike in balance, uh, riding with a high speed on the ice underground. Yeah, that's something I loved a lot. I won also world championships uh, in, yeah, uh, snow circumstances, uh, under 23 uh, world championships. And even in Louisville, uh, in the beginning of the day, there was snow. In the middle of the day, there was um, a little bit of ice. And in the end of the day, it was a, mud, a muddy course. Yeah, crazy. All right. Thanks for that. Let's let's now jump back to racing. So you've got some success in BMX. And then what was it that made you switch from BMX to cyclocross? I became 14, 15 years old. And on a certain moment, BMX was not so popular anymore in Belgium. And we had a few heroes coming out of cyclocross. Um, and one of them was Danny de Bee. He was a guy who was at that time the world champion in the elite category, and he lived five uh, um, k from my where I'm where I was born. And on a certain moment, uh, he came back from world championships in Pont Chateau at that time uh, with the jersey, and I drove my my bike to to the to his hometown, and and saw how he came home, and all the fans were there, and that created something. Um, really special for me and then I said okay with all my BMX skills I want to try also on a uh, on a cyclocross race and yeah we started and in the beginning I struggled a bit because of the distance BMX is really explosive and, and a short race 
And um, when I was 15, it, there was cyclocross races for half an hour. But I saw directly that uh, jumping barriers, uh, jumping over a ditch, these things helped me. And, and um, directly the passion was there. And, and uh, I never stopped again, never stopped anymore. It's amazing. And, and, you know, in doing our research on you, you have... You have so many victories across so many different categories of the sport. Um, I almost couldn't list them all, right? I mean, dozens of victories, um, upwards of, of 50, 60 victories around the world, tons of world cross, super prestige, you name it. Of all the, of all the accomplishments on the bike in cyclocross, what have been some of the special ones or the the highlight victories there are a lot that's that's for sure and and um all of them are really special but there are a few key uh races that i never shall forget um and that's uh my nine victories on the koppenberg it's a really special place for cycling in flanders uh all over the world um and and winning over there you need to be the strongest you need to have the skills in the downhill you need to be you use your tactics so yeah that for me is a special um, race but for sure um, one of the most special races for me was um, and it's not because we are in the us right now but that was the world championships in louisville um, not only winning on an age that I never expected anymore to win world championships. I was already 36, 37, but the circumstances, um, the weather changed during the day. So you need to adapt. Um, I used all my experience. Um, I, I could handle the pressure uh, that I couldn't handle when I was a young kid. Um, on a certain moment, they decided to do the race a day earlier because of the, the water that uh, came too high on the course all those things came together and then winning um uh, for me that was mind-blowing and and it opened a new world for me and that's also a reason why i'm sitting now in in waterloo and having also a good connection with people from trek yeah amazing amazing before we get to that that next chapter um in your career of racing I'm curious about some of the close calls that you might have had, you know, whether it be a crash, an accident, um, something crazy that happened, you know, and ev it, the bicycle can be a dangerous sport. Um, tell me, can you re recall some of your, your close calls or? Well, I can say that I'm a lucky man. I never uh, be, uh, came in a hospital during, and it's, 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 actually unbelievable but it's true i never came in a hospital during my cyclocross career wow the only yeah that's true i never broke something um and i had a long career the only problem i had was not in the cyclocross it's once i and it was my own mistake um i needed to select myself for the olympics on the mountain bike for london 2012 and one of those races in the World Cup in England, I um, I started the race and my disc, uh, my front disc um, was loose. And I was in a position that I could select myself and I was riding longer than, uh, than was possible. And on a certain moment I crashed because I didn't have to break anymore in a downhill. And then I had a problem with my knee that costed me um, a few months but I started the cyclocross season on a normal way, but that's the only moment during my career that I had problems with something. So I'm a lucky man. That's what I can say. That is incredible. I'm not a racer and even I'm not that lucky. I've had a couple spills on the bike and uh, I'm paying for it now for sure. What I can say is also that my mother always said, I, I, I had a lot of crashes during my career, that's for sure. But always um, I could, um, yeah, there, there were no broken collarbones or all those things that you normally happening in a cycling career. But my mother always says that it's because you're 
you drank in your young life a lot of milk and that helped to make your your bones really strong and that's the reason why i never broke something <laughs> that's what she's telling that's awesome mother's advice mothers are always right <laughs> <laughs> all right so at some point sven you're you've got this amazing career of racing and at some point you start to think hmm I'd like to stop being a racer, but I'd like to manage a racing team. And you end up buying a bike racing team. Yeah. Tell me about that, those early days of the Telnet Fidea Lions team and what brought you to that? Well, first of all, um, it's really important that you still have the passion when you stop your cycling career yourself. And the only way um, to handle um, that situation is um, even when you're not winning a lot anymore, still uh, enjoying race, enjoy racing. And uh, I created for myself a level that was possible to reach. Um, I tried it, tried to beat the young generation, but in my mind, it was not necessary anymore to win every weekend those races. To so try to battle with them, and on a certain certain moment. Uh, uh, win uh, one or two times for me that was enough um, and I still had my fans I still enjoy enjoying riding my bike uh, on the highest level and, and, and in the end of my career I won two races my last year but um, I had I, I never had more fans than in my last year even when I almost not win anymore and, and that helped me to make the new step to my second career and that was an opportunity because on a certain moment, the Telenet Fidea team at that time, it's now Balwaze Trek, um, they searched for a new owner. And that came all together on a certain moment. And then um, the team where I worked with, my coach, my management, they said, hey Sven, this is an opportunity where you can uh, use your experience and bring it to a new generation and help to uh, um, to create a level that they can win also world championships. And I said, yeah, directly, that's something I want to do because all those experience, when I can give them to the young guys, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. And I can stay in the field again. I can uh, try to be an ambassador even when I don't win any more races, but on uh, the other side of, the, of, of racing. And that worked out really well, step by step. I made a lot of mistakes, but I created again the same way like I, I created in my career a team around me with people who have the knowledge uh, together with my knowledge. And that helped to, to give confidence. And, and step by step, we are now a team that uh, yeah, reached goals. Uh, European champions, Lucinda Brandt won, won the world championships last year. And that's amazing. It feels the same like winning myself. Yeah, that's incredible. The team today is men and women, and you have a, a, an amazing infrastructure. I'm assuming the service course is nearby your hometown. Uh, how, how large is that team and organization today? It's not a really uh, large organization. It's a small team. Uh, we are focusing on, uh, on cyclocross but combining for sure also with road racing to prepare the cyclocross season. Um, but step by step, we are growing and we try to, um, to reach different uh, age groups from young kids until uh, professional riders, but also making connection with companies and do team buildings with them. Um, but um, it's a small group of people, but we know what. Um, what we can work out and, and we have strong teams around us. For example, Trek Segafredo, for example, Golazzo, who organizing a lot of races in Europe, in cyclo cyclocross, but also on the road and so, and so on. So um, it's, it's, it's really nice to have a lot of experience around me to create special things. But the cyclocross team itself, it's a small group of people who work together. That's great. Now, prior to you taking over that team, of course, you, you settled down a little bit and had a family, ended up raising a son who's also quite talented, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. <laughs> did you did, tell me about your influence on your son and, you know, how did he grow to where he is? And now he's on the Belois Trek team, right? Yeah, true. It's, it's, uh, it's something really special. Uh, I can't deny that it's, it's, uh, a thing that I never expected, but when I was a cycli cyclist myself, he was always there riding his small bike, uh, for him, it was, uh, a playground. Uh, he came out of the car, jumped on his bike, and uh, the whole day around he was riding, uh, jumping barriers, and, and step by step he said, yeah, Dad, I want to ride myself also in competition. He did a little bit of BMX, but not so much as, 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 as I did, but he started directly uh, doing cyclocross, and it came also um, together, because when I stopped, he started. So. Directly, I had also more time and spent time with him on the bike um, and, and, and bring him to the races. And I, I, I yeah, um, he was in the development team directly where, where we worked with uh, in uh, the Telenet Fidea team. And, and uh, really quick, he won races. He used also skills that I used when I was a kid. He learned with his eyes from what I did, I think. But it's another generation. He's communicating much better than I did when, when I was a kid. He's uh, handling the pressure much better. And I think that no, that's normal because he, he saw those things when I was a rider. And, and now uh, he's um, 19 years old. He became world champion himself as an under-23 cyclocross rider, but also a road rider, uh, European champion under 23 so it's going really fast right now and uh yeah now he's a professional cyclocross rider learning making mistakes step by step step we try to hold the pressure really low uh in the family but for sure there is a lot of pressure outside because he has the name that's normal he's got the name uh he's got the name and and now he's also become a professional cyc uh, cyclist on the road in the trek sega fredo team so it's it's amazing to see the development of 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 Thibaut. That's great. Yeah, so fun, so fun to have a family member sort of follow in your footsteps. Yeah. Let's switch gears again to talk about the Sven Nys Academy. Tell me about the origin of the academy. What is it? When did you come up with the idea? And and what are you doing now with it? Well, what we saw is that um, when I uh, came into the Telenet Fidea cyclocross team, they focused a lot on professional riders. And then we said, okay, if we want to do something for cyclocross in total, we need to do also some development with young kids um, without pressure, but just having fun on the bike, learning from each other. And uh, we created uh, a special place in my own town where uh, we have the uh, Svenes Cycling Center, where we have off-road um, tracks for mountain bike, cyclocross, a uh, little bit of BMX, uh, and 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 when th that all opened in 2016, when I stopped my professional career, so so we had the place, we had the space, and then I said, okay, now we are going to create an academy with kids between six and 14 years old that learn from each other and in the first year we had i think 65 riders who uh spent a week with me and then a few other riders a few other other coaches um and we saw directly that that had a lot of potential um and we saw also that when they come from monday until friday that they learned so much in five days um and i had also a lot of fun with them and and um now we are in 2022 and 900 riders are coming to the Sven Academy. Academy. Uh, boys, girls uh, mixing together, uh, doing some special camps only for girls during summer. So uh, it's amazing uh, to see how the Academy um, yeah, became bigger and bigger every year. And what we see now is that those kids become now also riders, not all of them. And it's not the pressure that they need to ride in competition, but a few of them uh, during those five years that we have the academy right now, 
becoming champions in their categories already right now. It's so fun to see that uh, that we have now a new generation and that we help develop them. Um, and okay, they are going also to other teams um, and that doesn't matter, but we help to, to, to let grow the sport in total. And that's also my ambition. That's amazing. Let me, let me just see if I got this right. You said 900 riders you'll see this year. Yeah, true. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy to see it's, it's always in uh, school holiday uh, weeks that we do it from Monday until Friday. Um, we have not an overnight camp, so they go home every day. They come at nine o'clock in the morning and they, leave again at five o'clock in the uh, in the evening um, but they come from uh, all over belgium sometimes from holland we have a few guys uh, coming out of hungary uh, it's crazy to see um, how many people that also investing and, and try to learn in the academy from other kids and um, yeah we open now the the academy for 2023 in november and what we saw last year is in 15 minutes time, everything is sold out. Oh my God. <laughs> That's incredible. Wow. And uh, do you have a scholarship program? Let's say there's a, a, a child that just doesn't have the, the means. Do you have a scholarship fund or program to help? Not, not yet. Um, but this is something we are going to, uh, to work out also because it's important that um, we give the opportunity to all the kids. And, um, and that's something we are um, yeah, making progress also. Step by step, uh, we try to learn. And I, I didn't make the mistake to say, okay, I put my name on it and um, I, I uh, put some coaches in the academy and, and it's, it shall run. We'll, we'll see that it's going to grow. No, that's not something I want to do. I want to be involved myself. I want to ride with those kids myself. And step by step, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to learn, and we're going to grow. And those things like scholarships, um, going also to other places in the country, um, do the Svenes Academy on tour, for example, those things is on my list, on my bucket list for the next few years. That's great. That's amazing. What a great, great thing to give back to the kids. Super exciting. Well, Sven, we, we are just about out of time now. I want to thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. It's been really, uh, really a delight to hear and uh, really inspiring as well what you do both on the bike and off the bike. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks that I can uh, talk about uh, my passion still after uh, 46 years. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that I still have dreams in this sport and that, that we still can do really special things. It's great. All right, Sven, have a great one. Good luck in Wisconsin. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.